Hi everyone! Today we're going to take a look at a Captain Jack Sparrow action figure I got on AliExpress. Now since I paid a total of $14.06 with free shipping, I think we can all safely assume that this Jack is a knockoff, or a bootleg, of the original version by SH Figure Arts, which sells for over $70. Now some knockoffs are decent quality, while others are rubbish. Which one is bootleg Jack? We'll find out. I didn't have very high expectations for Jack, because this is how he was delivered to my house. Apparently, the Postal Service now employs elephants that will compact your boxes down at no additional charge to you. What an age we live in. Somehow, Jack survived the elephant. His box is dusty, but otherwise it's fine. Out of the box, one of the first problems we notice, though, is Jack is balding. He has these two big flesh-colored patches on the back of his head. Now, looking at the pictures of the original release of this figure, it doesn't have this problem, because the back of his head was made out of brown plastic instead of flesh-colored. Jack's hair is attached to his head, but one clump always falls out. I think that piece is supposed to be glued into place. The tuft of hair that flows over Jack's bandana is painted a much lighter shade than the rest of his hair, so it looks really strange to me. This piece was designed to be removable, though, so that you could put on Jack's hat. Let's see how Jack's articulation holds up. His head is on a ball peg that allows rotation and tilt. His arms can raise out from his shoulders and raise up quite a bit. His elbows have a single hinge that allows slightly more than 90 degrees of movement, but unfortunately this is not enough for Jack to be able to touch his face. His hands are on hinged pegs that allow rotation and back and forward movement. His diaphragm joint allows him to bend forward a nice amount. Because of the sculpt of his clothing, Jack can't bring his thighs up to a 90 degree angle, but he can sit, that is if you don't mind a slouchy posture on a stool or any other type of chair without a back. While it's not ideal, it works for a pirate. Otherwise, he just looks really weird trying to sit. His knees are single jointed, but they bend over 90 degrees. His feet are hinged, allowing them to move up and down, and they also rock to the sides. Then he has a hinge on his toes. The joints on his ankle are weaker than I'd like. I had him collapse a few times on me due to those ankles when I was posing him for pictures. But he's fine in a neutral, you know, standy straight pose. Which, can you even consider that to be a pose? Oh, and I forgot, the back central portion of his hair is hinged too, and it can rotate. Jack comes with quite a few accessories. He has a total of 10 interchangeable hands. These hands are slightly rubbery, so it doesn't feel like you're going to break off his fingers by bending his fingers to put his sword or his bottle in his hand. But that softer plastic does come at a cost. His hands pop off very easily. Be prepared to spend a lot of time putting his hands back on when you pose him. The wrist pegs on him are thin, so I would still recommend using a hairdryer to soften the plastic of his hands the first few times you put them on the wrists. Jack also comes with a second faceplate. It's easy to swap out the faces. You start by pulling off his bandana. Then the face will slide right off the pegs. Attach the second face and secure it in place by putting the bandana back on. Another issue with my particular figure is the printing on his second face is off. I think it's easiest to see if I compare the two faces side by side. You can see the eyes on the face with the side glancing eyes are printed up much higher and approaching his eyebrow, while the second face on the authentic version of this figure has a surprised or startled expression. This misprint on the bootleg makes Jack look far more sinister. Jack also comes with a sword scabbard that now that I have on him, I'm never removing it again. If you get this figure, make sure that you pull off his face and hair before you try putting it on him. The sword in the scabbard is not removable, but Jack does come with a loose sword. I think it's a cutlass, and he holds it pretty well with his gripping hand. There's also a brown bottle that Jack can hold with several of his hands. Now this is a fun accessory. Jack's three-cornered hat fits snugly on his head. You just need to remove that one tuft of hair first. His final accessories are an open and closed version of his compass. These things are tiny, but they look nice in his hands. So overall, Bootleg Jack has his share of problems. Well, 
probably more than his share of problems. But at least for me, he was worth the $14. But I'm definitely going to be fixing up those bald patches on the back of his head with some paint. And I'll share a video on that soon. That's it for today, but if you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out the other videos on my channel, including more toy reviews and toy crafting projects. And if you like what you see, you could always subscribe to stay updated. Thanks for watching.